It's as easy as ABC. Hey everyone, Dr. Chuck back with another refrigerant checkup. Hopefully provide you some information to help you sort through a lot of the confusion around new refrigerants and what's going on in the HVAC R industry and trying to simplify it and give you some guidance to hopefully keep things straight in your head going forward. So of course when I talk about ABC, I'm talking about the refrigerants 454A, 454B, and 454C. If you can keep those three straight, I think we'll go a long way into helping you navigate through the refrigerants world here in 2024 and beyond. So just starting out, uh, we know from the 454 designation, the ASHRAE number, that those are all going to have the same components in them. If you haven't seen my video on how uh, naming and numbering and how blends are all formulated and how we get these numbers, I'll put a link down in the comments for you to check out. But anyway, the 454 series all contain the two components R32 and HFO 1234YF, just in different proportions. So the A is going to have about 35% 32, 65% YF, the B around 31%, and the C around 21 and a half percent. And again, those products are all low GWP blends. They are all gonna be A2L. So there's a lot of uh, training and a lot of information on the A2L class of refrigerants. I encourage you to check that out. We have a lot of good training resources uh, at Comores for the Option A2L products. Um, of course, they're all zero ozone depleting potential refrigerants at this point. And, uh, it turns out that those DWP numbers line up pretty nicely with the regulations we see coming out under the AIM Act and the sector controls. So if we can look, and this is an oversimplification obviously, but you can see those uh, lines have been drawn around the 700 mark, around the 300 mark, and around the 150 uh, GWP level depending on the application. And uh, we'll line up the products to meet those applications. Uh, but again, the, uh, the sector controls, air conditioning, 700, and commercial refrigerant, low temp, medium temp, uh, 300 or 150 GWP needed, uh, depending on the application. So to go a little bit out of order, starting with 454B, it may be the one you've heard a lot about. That is the air conditioning refrigerant that's going to replace 410A and new equipment going forward. Uh, over 80% of the OEMs worldwide are going to be uh, introducing that product and you probably have seen it already. I'd encourage you to get training on that. Uh, those systems will be rolling out uh, this year and, and, and just ramping up from there. So I wanna do a little comparison on 410A versus the new 454B. A lot of the properties, uh, you know, the lubricant recommendations, the pressures, temperatures, all gonna be very similar. But I wanna point out the couple key differences. One being the GWP. You know, the GWP of Legacy 410 is over 2,000. We're going down to less than 500, so a big reduction in just direct GWP moving to the 454B. Again, A1, going to be an A2L refrigerant now. Uh, only an equipment designed for that. There's special training. Uh, we're very excited uh, to get this going. There are some things you need to know, but overall we think it's going to be a pretty smooth transition as the industry moves there. And finally, even temperature glide. You know, 410A has a very minimal temperature glide, one that can almost be ignored. Uh, and save with 454B, it's a little bit higher, but uh, nothing that we can't uh, overcome with our good practices, best practices we've always used. Removing liquid from the jug. Um, it's okay to top off if you need to replace a little refrigerant in a system. Uh, using the correct, uh, correct column on a PT chart for setting superheat or subcooling but we think 454B is in a good position. So I wanna switch over a little bit to 454A and C and show you the difference between those two and where we think both of those will fit. So I'm gonna throw some performance uh, numbers up here relative to 404A because the 454A and C are gonna be used in low temp, medium temp refrigeration, uh, small systems, big systems, remote contensing units, uh, supermarket systems, uh, depending on the design. Uh, and the charge size will determine whether you pick uh, A or C of these two. But you can see very good performance in terms of capacity and energy efficiency. So 454A, you know, 7 to 10% improvement in capacity and, uh, you know, 5 to 9% in energy efficiency compared to 44A. Very, very good. That's in addition to the reduced GWP. So very, very good performance from 454A. 
The 454C, we give up a little bit of performance, and this is a trade-off that we make if we need to go to GWP less than 150. So 454C, GWP slightly under 150, uh, still get good performance. And it turns out in the regulations, you know, the applications here is uh, divided by charge size. So up to 200 pound charge size, you can use the 454A. So that's where we're really targeting 454A in remote condensing units, small uh, systems. And the 454C, uh, you know, larger systems is distributed, potentially uh, centralized systems, all dependent on how the codes and standards play out and how you design your system, uh, where you can use those, what kind of charge sizes you need to put in those systems. But again, both very, very good performing products. So uh, I hope this uh, somewhat of a simplification helps you. A, B, C. B is going to be air conditioning. A and C in commercial refrigeration, uh, dependent on the specifics of your system. They all perform very well. They're all A2L and are all regulatory compliant and will be good solutions for our uh, HVACR industry going forward. So I hope this helps. Uh, please check out some of my other videos on some of the basics. Uh, and if you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover in a future video, please feel to re reach out and we'll have a great team of engineering scientists back here at Camor supporting the Option products and we'll be glad to work with you and support you. Stay safe out there. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.